hurricanes. Every year, meteorologists face the challenge of predicting where and when a hurricane will strike. At stake, the lives of millions of people who live in the path of these monster storms. On October 8, 2018, the residents of Mexico Beach, Florida are told to evacuate. This storm, I think, took a lot of not only the locals, residents, and visitors by surprise, but I think a lot of experts, too, like meteorologists. In less than 48 hours, this sleepy coastal town will become ground zero for the strongest hurricane to ever strike the Florida panhandle. The storm's name is Michael, from the Hebrew meaning who is like God. We had never seen a Category 4 make landfall in the panhandle of Florida. This was one for the record books. Michael hits the coast of Florida with maximum sustained winds of 155 miles per hour. If the wind doesn't get you, the water will. Or if the water doesn't get you, the wind will. And that's exactly what happened here. The wind is strong enough to basically defoliate trees. It's strong enough to take just about every part of a roof apart, not just the shingles flying away, but literally peeling back roofs as if you're opening a tin can. As the storm intensifies, Jim Cantori, Stephanie Abrams, and a Weather Channel team set up operations in Panama City Beach, some 30 miles west of Mexico Beach. Their makeshift reporting area is at a hotel just outside the reach of Michael's western eye wall. But even then, the wind is gusting up to 90 miles per hour. The winds are coming right down the beach, and they're probably hitting the hotels a little bit here. So they're incredibly strong. What's really weird is I'm not really in the worst of it. Okay, the worst of it, I wouldn't have been able to stand up. The reason we go into storms to broadcast is to show people what it's like in one of these hurricanes, right? That people have never experienced. Of course, we do that with the caveat that if it gets too dangerous, then we go inside. We have a place to go. I tried to get down on the beach with my cameraman, but the sand is relentless. I will lie that there is a love of doing this. I, I like seeing how Mother Nature can amp up a little bit. But this one does bring a little added excitement. I can see, as I'm doing the broadcast, just that kind of the core of my eye, this two by four that was kind of dancing with the wind. Hold on, guys. Just give me a second here. Look, that was so close. That was a really close call, and he's very lucky because that thing could have impaled him. Oh, I'm like, Jim, duck, cover. I see that piece of debris heading towards Jim, and in my mind, I'm going like this. Hey, give me the help. After that, I walked over to my producer and I said, give me that damn helmet right now. Okay, enough is enough. Welcome to live television, everybody. Riding out the hurricane in Panama City Beach was no breeze, but Mexico Beach suffered Michael's full force. I kept saying to myself, wow, Panama City Beach is getting tore up. I can't fathom what it's like right now in the eye wall of this hurricane where they're seeing the worst damage and the strongest wind. One person who can fathom it is veteran storm chaser Brett Adair. You can't see 50 feet in front of you. It's raining so hard. The winds are getting so intense. Uh -oh. Adair and his driver are just east of Mexico Beach and are caught in the belly of the beast. Power lines are down, pieces of debris flying over the truck, and we look at each other and we kind of say, you know, we, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. We're talking about a high-end major hurricane that basically has winds of an EF3 tornado that goes on for hours. It's not like a tornado that goes in and comes out. It stays in an area for hours, just completely destroying everything in its path. Do you want us to go? Here, to comes, the Here comes the surge. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to go back. With the storm surge rising, Brett and his driver abandoned their car behind a retaining wall. This looks good. This looks better. We had to make a run for it over the retaining wall. And when we did so, there's all kind of debris flying through the air, piercing your skin. We had the worst conditions hit us faster than we expected. And also, we had storm surge come up on the highway faster than we expected as the wind shifted. 
that's the first time in a storm I think that I felt a little bit helpless. Adair and his driver find shelter in a nearby empty house, which seems more solid and secure than most others. When they emerge two and a half hours later, most of Mexico Beach is gone. I don't think I really understood the scope of what happened to us until I walked out and I just saw some of those homes that were on the beach side of the highway move to the opposite side. And then I'm like, oh, wow, we really dodged a bullet here. I mean, it was a serious situation that we could have lost our lives. People always seem to underestimate the force, the strength of these storms, especially when it comes to storm surge. The storm surge that comes in can just wipe buildings off their foundations. Not only homes, but also a lot of farming down here as well was wiped out by the winds from this hurricane. And the winds were so strong, it literally tipped over a train. We were in shock. Michael's final toll, start to finish, is staggering. Estimates of more than 70 dead and $25 billion in damage from Central America all the way into Upper Virginia. When I see the devastation from storms like Hurricane Michael, the meteorologist in me goes out the window. I become a human because I know that lives were affected. I know that people lost their lives, lost their homes, lost their communities even. It will take Mexico Beach and the surrounding area years, possibly decades, to recover. The people who live here can only hope there will never be another storm like Michael.